Hi, thank you so much for joining me on this video today where we're talking about factoring. Um, we are talking about factoring the differences of squares, which is a special case for polynomials, binomials specifically. And they're all going to follow a very special pattern that's going to let us factor so quickly. So here it says the binomial expression of a squared minus b squared is called the difference of squares. Now think about what difference of squares means. Difference is subtraction. Squares, we're talking about perfect square values. So like x squared, 49, b to the fourth, because the square root of b to the fourth would be b squared. Um, 64, 100, 144, we're thinking about our perfect squares. So it's gotta be a perfect square minus a perfect square. That's our differences of squares. And if we have that, we can factor it very easily. a squared minus b squared actually becomes a plus b times a minus b. Okay, It's the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, and then a sign of each. And it's really because we already did a lesson where we were multiplying um, products together, special products, a plus b times a minus b. And we already did this part here. Um, a times a, if I multiply those two together, that would give us a squared. A times negative b, okay, I'm just getting my pencil here. So a times a would give us this a squared. Then a times negative b would give us negative ab. And then we'd have to distribute the positive b. So b times a is ab. And then b times negative b is that negative b squared. And what would happen is if we had these four terms, these two middle terms, negative ab and positive ab, they would end up simplifying each other out. And this is all we would have. So we actually learned what would happen with this special product. And now we're doing the opposite. We're saying if we notice that our binomial is a squared minus b squared, then hey, I can simply factor it as a plus b, a minus b. And of course it doesn't matter. You can write a minus b first and then a plus b second. That's just our um, commutative property of multiplication. So we're going to be taking a look at a few different things for differences of squares. Um, the very first thing we're going to be taking a look at is just our basic factoring if it's in this form. If it's in the form simply of a squared minus b squared. So a perfect square minus perfect square. Um, just waiting for my screen to go here. Okay. So, k squared minus 100. So, this follows the pattern. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. And I'm constantly going to check for that. The square root of k squared is k. The square root of 100 is 10. So, my factored form is simply k plus 10, k minus 10. That's how easy it is to factor these. Because think about it, k times k is k squared. k times negative 10 is negative 10k. 10 times k is positive 10k. So a negative 10k and a positive 10k simplify each other out. And then 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. So then if k squared minus 100 is k plus 10k minus 10, then m squared minus 36 would be m plus 6, m minus 6. 4y squared minus 121. Square root of my first term is 2y. Square root of 121 is 11. So it's 12y plus 11, 12y minus 11. 16x squared minus 81. Square root of 16x squared would be 4x. Square root of 81 would be 9. So it's 4x plus 9, 4x minus 9. 64 minus m squared. Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of m squared is m. So it's 8 plus m, 8 minus m. Notice I kept it in the exact order. Okay, it's the square root of the first term and then the square root of the last term. 25x squared minus 49y squared. So square root of 25x squared would be 5x. Square root of 49y squared is 7. Uh, I don't know why I have 4y there. I've got to fix that. 7y. So it's 5x plus 7y, 5x minus 7y. Sorry about that. Okay, the next time we're going to look at is going to be the exact same skill, but we have an additional step. The additional step is that we really should always be looking to see if we have a greatest common factor. And the other problems that we just did, there was no greatest common factor, so we didn't have that issue pop up, but for these we would. And the big indicator is going to be that it's not a perfect square minus a perfect square. 
So if I look at 8y squared minus 32, 8 is not a perfect square. 32 is not a perfect square. So that immediately tells me, hey, I can't do this special format. But I do notice that there is a GCF. Greatest common factor of 8y squared and 32 is 8. Now, if I factor out an 8 from this binomial, something we learned in the very beginning of our factoring uh, unit here, in my parentheses, I would be left with y squared minus 4. Now, look at the binomial that's inside of our parentheses, y squared minus 4. Is that a difference of squares? Is that a perfect square minus a perfect square? It is. That 8 that we factored out just hangs out. Square root of y squared is y. Square root of 4 is 2. So it's y plus 2, y minus 2. Let's try the next one. Not a perfect square, not a perfect square. What's the GCF of 50 and 18? It would be 2. If I factor out a 2 from both of these terms, I'm left with 25t squared minus 9v squared. Look at what's in the parentheses. A perfect square minus a perfect square. So that 2 that I GCF factored out right from the beginning is good. Great, um, square root of 25t squared is 5t. Square root of 9v squared is 3v. So 5t plus 3v, 5t minus 3v. Pretty good to go. Okay, next one. 2x squared minus 128y squared. Greatest common factor here would be 2. If I factor out a 2, then I'm left with x squared minus 64y squared. And notice I'm left with a perfect square minus a perfect square. 2 hangs out. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 64y squared is 8y. So it's 2 times x plus 8y, x minus 8y. Got a few more problems for us. Okay. Greatest common factor of 36y cubed minus 9y. Notice there's y's in both terms. So my GCF here is actually a 9y. Remember whenever we want to factor out the greatest common factor, it's always got to be the biggest. Remember that. So I wouldn't want to factor out a 3 because that's not the greatest. Also, I have to factor out a y because y cubed is not a perfect square. y is not a perfect square. But when I factor out a 9y, look what we're left with. 4y squared, which is a perfect square, minus 1. 9y, square root of 4y squared is 2y, square root of 1 is 1. So 2y plus 1, 2y minus 1. Greatest common factor of 3x to the 4th minus 48x squared. GCF of 3 and 48 is 3. GCF of x to the 4th x squared would be x to the 2nd. I'm then left with x squared minus 16. 3x squared hangs out. x squared minus 16 becomes x plus 4, or x minus 4. Last one. Greatest common factor of 16m to the third minus 100m would be 4m. If we factor out a 4m, we're left with, edit this out to 4m squared minus 25. If I have 4m squared minus 25, I'm left with 4m. Square root of 4n squared would be 2m. Just got to add in my 2s here. So 2m plus 5 and 2m plus 5. And I apologize for that, but not a big deal. Okay, square root of 4m squared is 2m. Square root of 25 is 5. Last tab are the equations. Now, you've been solving polynomial equations for binomials, trinomials, when you were learning how to factor the trinomials, and now it's the same idea. Always a three-step process. Step one, set the equation equal to zero. Step two, factor. Step three, set each factor equal to zero and solve. So we're always going through that three-step process. For this first one here, 4x squared minus 25 equals zero. Step one, set the equation equal to zero. What would you tell me? It's already set equal to zero. Step two, factor. Does that look like it's factor? No. Is there a greatest common factor here, 4x squared minus 25? No. Is this a perfect square minus a perfect square? Can I factor it in that special form? Yes. Square root of 4x squared is 
2x. Square root of 25 is 5. So it's 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5 equals 0. So the equation was set equal to 0 already. We factored it. And now we're setting each factor equal to 0 and solving. This is the easiest part, guys. Solving two really basic equations. We would be getting negative 5 halves and positive 5 halves. Now, what's really nice about these solutions, and it's only for difference of squares here at this time, is that we're always going to see we get the positive and negative of the same value. So I can write them separately, negative 5 over 2, I can call it negative 2.5, positive 2.5, or if I want to note both of them, the positive and the negative, I can use the symbol where there's a plus sign and a minus sign, and it looks like this. My solution is the positive and negative of 5 over 2. Something cool to try out. Let's try the next one. 16y squared equals 81. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. We talked about it. When you set an equation equal to 0, you always send everything to the side of the highest degree as long as the leading coefficient is positive. So here you would have that, a nice positive leading coefficient of 16 as I send the 81 over. So now it's 16y squared minus 81 equals 0. I check for a GCF. Is there a greatest common factor of 16 and 81? Nope. Uh, square root of 16y squared is 4y. Square root of 81 is 9. So it's 4y minus 9, 4y plus 9. We set each equal to 0. And we're going to have that same special case happen where we get a positive and negative solution of the same value, a negative 9 fourths and a positive 9 fourths. So I can list them separately, or I can say y is equal to plus or minus 9 fourths, because that's saying I can use the positive value or the negative value. Last one for us. Step one, set the equation equal to 0, so I would need to subtract 50. So now I have 98b squared minus 50 equals 0. Step two, factor. Is 98 a perfect square? No, 50 is not either. So that tells me there's probably a GCF here. Greatest common factor of 98 and 50 is 2. If I factor out a 2 from both of those terms, I'm left with 49b squared minus 25. Keep that factor 2 out on the outside. Square root of 49b squared is 7b. Square root of 25 is 5. So it's 7b plus 5, 7b minus 5. We set each factor equal to 0, and we're getting our solutions. And then again, we would be able to say it's plus or minus. I hope this video was helpful for you as you're factoring and solving equations of differences of squares. Take a look at my other videos for any more help that you could need. Thanks, guys.